So welcome back to TNK's Automotive. That's Tristan as always. Uh, so I got this 05 Impala here. Uh, I'm going to show you what's going on with it. Uh, front end noise. And uh, yeah, see what you guys think. And slam the door. So it came in for front end noise. We're going to be doing some stabilizer links, tie rod ends, lower ball joints. But if you notice, I don't know if you can see all that oil. Looks like it's coming from uh, the valve curve, so we're going to recommend doing that. And you can see everything's saturated pretty good. But if you look right here, that's a stabilizer bar. And it is completely broke in half. So this is going to be the main cause for the front end noise. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. The first thing you want to do is lubricate those bolts. Now the first thing you want to do, like I said, is get some PV blaster on those bolts now. Uh, so you don't have to fight as much to get them off later. So get everything sprayed down, wait a couple minutes. Uh, then basically it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. We're going to be doing a little ball joint. I'll show you guys how to use the press. Uh, the stabilizer link that has four bolts that hold the bar on and the uh, actual links that hold it on. So, but the one side you've seen is broke, so we don't have to worry about taking that link off till later, but we take the other side off and the bar literally just slides out of there. You kind of have to finagle it out of there and then you just put the new one in there, put the new stab links in, and then you go from there. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Uh, and yeah, enjoy. So the first thing I'm doing now, I'm going to take the brake caliber off, rotor and all that, so everything's just out of the way. So we're going to do that now. I already got the bolt out. We're gonna just, I just use a pry bar, work it off. So the caliber was held on by 15 millimeter bolts, top and bottom. The top one has a little rubber pushing on it, I'll show you. That's a little rubber bushing on it, that goes on the top one. The bottom one does not have that, so you don't want to mix that up. And then we're going to take the, the shoe off. I just hung the caliber up on the coil. Get it out of the way so it's not hanging on the brake hose. Now the brake caliber shoe was held on by 15 millimeter bolts too. I use a sh short 15 half drive with a half drive stubby extension that clears that uh, the uh, quick strut bolts that hold on there. So, because uh, the socket won't reach, so that clears that out if you just use that setup right there. And then I'm going to use a 3 8 with a deep 15 on it just to zip them out. Now doing a tie rod and when you take it off and replacing it so you don't have to do an alignment you always measure it so I already got this side tore apart uh, now the low ball joints on the 05 Impalas they are riveted in so you either got to use an acetylene torch to burn them out or use an air hammer with a chisel end on it and chisel them out chisel the heads off and then use a punch to punch them out uh, I don't have acetylene torches, so I use a chisel and chisel the top off and then punch the rivets out through the bottom and then the ball joint will come out. Uh, I took the whole spindle off. Uh, it's going to be two 15 millimeter, no, 19 millimeter bolts on the uh, strut. Uh, the brake caliber and the caliber shoe are, is going to have 15 millimeter bolts on them, four together. The stab link. If you're replacing them and not reusing them, you can literally just cut them out or burn them out.
and just make life easy. And the tie rod end, you always got to measure it before you take them off. So when you put the new one on, you don't mess up the alignment or you're going to have to eye it out. And, or if you don't have an alignment machine, tell them to go get an alignment. Uh, and the stabilizer bar is connected by two 13 millimeter bolts. Now the back one, that one right there where my finger is, is always a pain in the butt. You're going to put a pair of vice grips on that little nipple because the nipple will spin with the bolt and you never get it out. And it's tight in there. So you got to get a pair of vice grips, heat it up, and then break it loose. The front one's not bad at all. It's always the back one. Now, since I completed the other side, I'm going to show you guys how to do this side and take all this apart. Uh, but I did take the tie rod end off already. Uh, basically, you break the jam nut loose, and uh, you just take this nut off. It usually spins with the, with the uh, stud on it. The nut usually spins on it. So if I'm replacing the tie rod end, I'll just burn it or cut it off. Or uh, if not, you got to get a pair of vice grips or something to hold it so you can break it loose. Uh, see, like I was saying, that little piece in there will spin with the bolt. So you got to hold it when you take it off. Uh, so you got to heat it up and hold it with a pair of vice grips while you wrench it out of there. Uh, it's a 13 millimeter. You got to use a ratchet and wrench works best because you won't be able to get a ratchet with a socket on it. Even with a low profile socket, it's not going to fit in there it's going to be hitting everything so you got to use a ratcheting wrench uh, so yeah the first thing I'm going to do is you're going to take the brake caliber off the shoe the rotor axle nut then you're going to bust these loose up here take those out and get all this out of the way so when we're replacing all this anyway so the customer approved all these repairs it needs a little I'm going to show you guys how to do little ball joints because they're kind of a pain because uh, they're not they got rivets in it instead of bolts uh, you can't really see it now, but when I get the rotor out of the way, you guys will be able to see it. And, uh, yeah, let's get started. So, like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the caliper off. I'm going to use a 3 8 flex head ratchet with a 13 millimeter shallow, I mean, uh, 15. I said 15 millimeter. And it's going to help if you turn the wheel towards you. Now the top one is going to have a rubber cushion on it or a seal and that one goes on the top always. The bottom will not have that. And once you get those loose you just want to get a pry bar and work it loose. Some of them will fight you a little bit. Don't let it fall like that because it could break the brake line. Now I'm just going to hang it up on the uh, strut tower to get it out of the way. Now these pads look good, but we're going to end up replacing them. Now we're going to take off the shoe 
and those are also 15 millimeter. But we're going to break out the half drive for the flex head. I like flex heads. I had to bust out an extension to clear the uh, strut tower uh, bow heads. You break them loose, and I'm going to zip them out. Now you want to hold this because it's going to fall. Now with that, you can just pop the rotor off, set that out of the way. Now we're going to end up busting the axle nut loose. I'm going to give you a size here in a second. Now the axle nut is going to be a 34 millimeter, and you're not going to get that in a common size, so you're going to have to buy an axle nut kit. Put that on there. I'm going to use a little stubby air hammer because they're really not on there that tight. Now we're going to take off the uh, strut tower nuts, which are going to be 21s. I think I said they were 19s. My bad. I'm mistaken them. I usually don't have to hold these because they're not going to budge. Now you're going to want to pop these out. Uh, usually, I would say put a jacket underneath this to help get them out, but they've been coming out pretty easy. Uh, you're just going to use a sledgehammer. Uh, you don't want to hit it too hard, so you mushroom. You don't want to mushroom the tips on these on the on the bolts. Okay, since the bolts didn't want to come out easy like they did the other side, you got to put a jack underneath. Not a lot of pressure, just enough to get the pressure off the spindle, so you can hit them out. So, you don't have to worry about holding this in because they got splines on it. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but they have splines, so that's why I said you just pop the nut off. Uh, now, they, this side did come out a little bit harder. I just used the air hammer, but you just got to make sure you don't mushroom tip the end on it or mess the threads up. Now, we're going to uh, take the axle off the spindle. Uh, now, the spindle is completely loose because... The tie rods are off, uh, the calibers off, and you just took we just took the strut tower off. So now we just gotta break free the splines on the axle, and then we can just pull the whole spindle off. So what you're gonna want to do now? A lot of people would hit this with a hammer. Uh, I make life easy. You just get a little air hammer with a a point on it, and that's what that little nipple is on there for. So you put it right in there like that, and you hammer it right with. And I'll show you how to do that now. You just make sure it's loose. You see how it's going in now? Like that? Because if we broke the spine free. 
Now we're ready to take the spindle off. We broke free the axle nut. As you can see, I can push it in now. Uh, what you just want to do, you just tap on it a little bit. Now that we got the axle out of the spindle, we got to take the ball joint out from the bottom of the spindle, which is going to be a cotter key. And I think it's going to be a 15 millimeter castle nut, which holds the cotter key. Uh, now, like I was saying earlier, you can see right here, this ain't a bolt that or a nut or anything. That's a rivet. So we're going to have to take an air hammer or settling torch and melt those off or cut those off or knock those off. And then we're going to punch these out the bottom. And then you can get the ball joint out of the control arm. Because they do sell the whole control arm with the ball joints in it. But since the, uh, the control arm bushings ain't bad on the car... We're not going to do that. We're just going to do it because the whole control arm is a lot more money than just the ball joint. So to save the customer money, we're just going to do it this way. If it was my way to make life easy, I would just, you know, just did the whole control arm. But, you know, life ain't as easy as it always looks. So uh, we're going to get the castle nut off, take the uh, cotter key out, and then we're going to get the ball joint out. To do to get them out, I use a pair of needle noses, a punch, and a little baby hammer. And what I'll do first, you straighten your ends out so because they have to slide through the bolt. There's a hole there. So now we got them squeezed together. Let's see if we can get onto it a little bit. If not, that's what the punch comes in for. You see, I, I, there's a loop on the end, and you punch it through the loop, and you start working this way through. And you, as you can see, it's starting to come. See, it's starting to come. boom there it is now I don't suggest reusing this you can buy a, a kit of them I don't know for 20 bucks and it comes with like a hundred of them so don't reuse it now this is gonna be I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a 19 millimeter or an 18 uh, it is an 18 millimeter and I'm gonna use a deep weld with a uh, a universal impact rated and a small extension. Uh, I don't have the swivel impact sockets, uh, but I am going to get a set from uh, Icon. They do. They just came out with a set, so I'm going to pick those up and we we'll do a review on them and see how they do. So I'll just do it like that. You get the impact ready. pop off just like so and you can also see how it's got now that we got that off now what you're going to use that's a pickle fork that goes down to an air hammer or this a pickle fork you hit with a sledge or you can use a sledge and hit this to bust it loose now since we're lucky this thing going to slide right off there for us now, like I was saying, you see these three rivets? To get this ball joint out of here, you got to cut these or use an air hammer with a chisel end on it and chisel these off to get this ball joint off of here. Now, I did the other side. We're going to do this side. And then, uh, basically, we're ready to go put it all back together. And I'll show you guys that on the next video. So, yeah. Chisel these off. And then you're going to use a hole punch and punch them through. Uh, now these are going to be a pain in the butt, so that's probably the hardest part of the whole job right here. So we just did the teardown on how to do a stabilizer bar, ball joints, tie rod ends, and uh, 
and stab links. Uh, so we did the tear down today. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to show you guys how to do it in the next video, how to put it all back together. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, thanks for watching and have a good rest of your evening.